don't worry everyone, Jared Roughhead 2 came through with the goods. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball. Today we are back and we are revisiting the Dynasty Rookie ranks, looking at uh, 80 through to 41 in today's show. And then tomorrow we'll be looking at the top 40 of my Rookie Dynasty, which have been re-ranked slightly, tweaked a little bit after Summer League. So a little bit of Summer League discussion here. Probably do another Summer League show maybe at the start of next week, talking about guys who weren't rookies and guys who really stood out in that sort of a situation. But for now, Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. To it. Another quick reminder that uh, information on the Red Rock Challenge Leagues is going to be coming out very soon. We're going to be doing a charity portion for those leagues. We're going to do auction drafts, snake drafts, points, draft only, head-to-head, roto leagues. Um, we're going to have, uh, I said auction and snake drafts as well, all uh, for the ability to get into the Champions League, the Red Rock Dynasty League. Um, Rookie draft starts today. There will be no new Dynasty Leagues this year. There's already 13 current uh, Dynasty Leagues in existence. We'll reconsider that again next year, but I'm not about starting multiple ones every single year. That sort of defeats the purpose of just flooding the market with Dynasty Leagues. So we maybe look at that next year, but there will be a bunch of redraft ones. We had 60 plus last season, and I imagine we'll get at that number or probably exceed it again this season. We'll see how that all pans out. The best way to get priority access to that is patreon.com slash redrock underscore b-ball. After those guys have taken their spots, the remainder of the spots will be advertised on Twitter. It'll be posted on YouTube in the YouTube description of some videos. It'll go onto Facebook as well. It'll go onto Instagram also. There'll be multiple ways to get those spots into those leagues. But as I said today, what we are looking at is a re-rank of the Dynasty Rookie Draft. Guys, after the NBA Draft, I went through and did the top 80 players. Now we're going to go through and do those same 80 players and see if they've moved based on Summer League performances. Now, Summer League in general, my overall thoughts, it was a bit disappointing this season, no doubt about that. It was the lack of talent in this draft overall, the fact that so many of the players who showed a modicum of talent didn't actually play, with so many guys being injured or being held out for rest, which is just a load of shit, really. And the way that this felt like, and I don't know anything about this for sure, but it certainly felt like the way that the league was handling Summer League, as massive as it's gotten, is that teams aren't uh, interested in it anymore holding guys out for rest when guys haven't played for four months and don't play again for another three months is pretty ridiculous. The NBA's trade issue in terms of the league calendar starting on the 6th of the July with so many first round picks being traded, meaning those guys couldn't play, was a joke. The first two to three days, guys couldn't play. And then even when they were available to play, DeAndre Hunter, Jarrett Culver, for example, they played like one game between them uh, despite not being injured. So that was a real frustrating thing. And I do worry about where the future of Summer League goes if teams are going to be holding their guys out um, for rest, for team cohesion, whatever sort of, oh, we don't want to play him because he's not comfortable with the team yet. That's exactly what Summer League is for, to get these guys in a competitive environment. So it was pretty frustrating in that regard. So there's not massive amounts of movement here because so many guys didn't play, especially the top end guys, hard to differentiate where they all sit. So you know, some guys surprised me, played better than expected. We saw some second and third year guys really put it to the other players, which is exactly what they should be doing. But I've waffled on enough about this. Maybe it's time that I should start actually looking at how these rankings sit and uh, and getting into the uh, the top 80 guys from Summer League. But before I, I do that, just a, a quick mention. One guy who wasn't included in my initial top 80 rankings, but has now secured a, a two-way contract with the Golden State Warriors, Kai Bowman. Now, for the purpose of these rookie ranks, he's probably going to be in that 70 type zone. But the two-way contract was just announced, and I haven't slotted him in here, and he wasn't in my original 80. He uh, he didn't do a huge amount at uh, at Summer League, played uh, seven games and averaged three points with 1.9 assists. He's a uh, six-foot-one guard, 21 years old, um, played, uh, where did he play college? It's uh, completely escaping me at the moment, Boston, uh, Boston College. Um, didn't do didn't do a huge amounts, shot 27% on his threes, couldn't hit his free throws on, on limited amounts, nothing there that was spectacular. So he is still right down the bottom, but I thought I'd give Kai Bowman a little bit of a mention because he wasn't in my initial 80, and now he's going to play in the NBA at some point this season as a two-way guy with the Golden State 
with the Golden State Warriors. All right, let's have a look now at these top 80 players. Um, at number 80, we've got the Sacramento Kings, Vanja Marinkovic. Miss Vanji. Miss Vanji. Marinkovic won't be coming over this season. Um, I don't know if he'll ever come over. I had him probably a little bit too high. I initially had him at 70. He's dropped all the way down to number 80. Uh, he didn't didn't show me, didn't do anything to, to change my mind here. Uh, with with him at uh, at summer league mainly because uh, I don't even I don't even think he was there uh, to be honest. But um, he, he's not not a guy that I really think he's going to have any sort of impact in the. He wasn't at summer league. I don't know why I even thought he was. Um, I don't think he's going to have really any impact in the NBA. And it was a bit of a silly pick by the Kings at 79. Brian Bowen moves up. He he played for the Pacers. He looked okay at, at times. He definitely wasn't spectacular or, or standing out. He played a lot of minutes for Indiana. Um, he's on a, a two-way contract there after spending last season in the uh, in the NBL down here in Australia. Um, he played uh, only three games, 30 minutes a game, averaged 12 points, which is which is obviously pretty strong. Shot the three ball really well, which is what he's going to need to do to be able to keep uh, keep a solid uh, a solid role in the NBA. Rebounded the ball pretty well, but nothing that overly excites me there on that Pacers team, and it's going to be hard for him to get those minutes. At number 78, Moses Brown, he doesn't move. Number 77, Robert Franks, a two-way guy from the Charlotte Hornets. He did not do anything to get us excited at all. Played eight or nine minutes a game for three points. Nothing interesting there, so he's right down the bottom. Number 76, Max Struess from the Boston Celtics, another two-way guy. 75, Dedrick Lawson. 74, Sagaba Kanate of the Toronto Raptors. He didn't play coming off a knee injury. A guy I dropped down quite a bit was Cody Martin, who just today has signed his contract with the uh, with the um, Charlotte Hornets. They had a, a pretty, uh, well, they've got a pretty bad looking roster, but they had a only 12 guys signed waiting for Cody Martin to, to sign. He only averaged nine points in 23 minutes. He did shoot 40% on his threes and averaged uh, a solid amount of assists, 1.8 assists, which for some leagues, not a bad number. He could be forced into action on this team, given how poor they are, but I don't really see much for Cody Martin as a uh, as a long-term player. Daquan Jeffries comes in at number 72. That's exactly where he was before. He signed with the uh, Magic into their G League team. I think that he is going to be an interesting interesting player there. I thought he did some okay things at Summer League. He definitely didn't look out of place. But in terms of him ever becoming an NBA caliber player, he shot 55% on his threes, which is obviously excellent. 13 points a game in 28 minutes. Yeah, they're obviously really strong numbers. His um, his blocks and steal numbers are really good. 1.4 steals, one block per game. I'm not sure how that translates, but there's a little bit of hope for Daquan Jeffries. At number 71, Zylan Cheatham, who uh, played for the Pelicans. He dropped a couple of spots in my rankings here. I thought he could be an interesting guy coming out of Arizona State. He didn't do he didn't do really a huge amount to get me all that excited during his summer league stint with other players on the Pelicans team. Looking a lot better. 19 minutes a game. Shot the ball poorly. Just six points. Did have six boards per game, but not someone who was all that uh, all that interesting long term. And number 70, Jalen Hands of the Brooklyn Nets. Doesn't have a contract at this point, and I don't think he's going to end up with a contract for the Nets this season. Probably plays for Long Island, but he drops a couple of spots from 68 down to number 70 in my re-ranks. Today's show is also uh, it's well supported by the guys at Manscaped. Number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. You may have seen them on Shark Tank. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. That's 20% off at manscaped.com by using the promo code locked on. All right, let's get into the next bunch of guys at number 69. Problem with my... Wrong button. Giggity. That's the right one. I'm just rusty getting back into it. Number 69 is Kyle Guy of the Sacramento Kings. Now, Guy, not a guy, pun unintended, who I thought would be an awesome NBA player, but did well in summer league. 29 minutes a game, 15 points a game, 35% on threes on huge volume, over seven attempts per game, shot his free throw as well. Averaged over a steal, almost three assists. Overall, his shooting from the field wasn't great, but he was a high usage player in summer league. I just don't see him ever transitioning into anything more than a third string point guard. So while he did put up numbers in summer league, I just don't really see how it's going to translate 
into big numbers for him across uh, an NBA team or in a, in a fantasy league. At number 68, Mario Shayok of the Philadelphia 76ers. He actually dropped a couple of spots here, mainly due to a couple of guys who were behind him leaping ahead of him. But he did play quite a few minutes for the Sixers, 21 minutes a game, an average 14.5 points, shot 40% on his threes on pretty strong volume, average almost three assists and over four rebounds. The three assists is a real surprise for Shayok, but he is an older player uh, out of Iowa State. The Sixers do need guys that can shoot, and that was one of his things in college, being a shooter, being a scorer. So coming in there, I just don't see a role behind Zaire Smith, DRC, behind Matisse Thibel as those backup wings, Jimmy Ennis there as well. I don't see Shyark providing that, and I don't really ever see him developing into anything more than a 13th or 14th man. But he did look pretty strong uh, on, the, uh, on the Summer League squad. It just wasn't... Um, he, he ended up dropping two spots only because a couple of guys jumped ahead of him. Now, one of those guys who did jump ahead of him was the Houston Rockets' Chris Clemens, who has moved all the way up to 67. He averaged over 20 points per game with four rebounds, 1.6 steals. He hit almost five threes a game. He shot those at 42%. He was absolutely fantastic. One of the best scorers in college history as well, Clemens, and he kept doing that in uh, in Houston. In Houston, I like what I really like what they did with a lot of their undrafted signees. Him, Shamori Pons, another one. Uh, Moses Brown, another guy that they signed. We talked about him a little bit earlier. But Clemens really stood out here. The Rockets are going to need with the Tillman Fatita's uh, obvious avoidance, despite his protestations and Daryl Morris' protestations of paying the tax getting these undrafted minimum salary rookie type of guys to come in and maybe fill a Gerald Green type of role. Yes, Gerald Green is back for the Rockets this season, but in the coming years, Clemens could be a player that they could look to do that. And his ability to score obviously translated to summer league level. Getting to the NBA level, I don't know, but we've seen guys like Daniel House, Green off the scrap heap coming into this Houston system with D'Antoni. So Clemens took a pretty big leap up in terms of the the rankings just because of how well he, he showed out. Really, really big numbers from Chrissy Clemens. Uh, through Summer League, uh, one of the, the highest, actually the second highest scorer uh, throughout the entire tournament at uh, 20 points per game. Only uh, one other guy got to over 20, and that was Nikhil Alexander-Walker. So Chris Clemens, uh, a big jump up, nine spot leap in the rankings. At number 66, Jalen Noel of the Minnesota Timberwolves. He uh, There's not a huge hope for him uh, as we move forward, but uh, he sits there. I had some intrigue with him coming out of college, and he uh, remains in a similar spot to where he was before. The next play we look at is one of the Cavs two-way guys. That's Dean Wade at number 65. He's dropped three spots there. He played 28 minutes a game for the Cavs, seven points and almost six boards with three and a half assists. Three ball wasn't falling. None of his shots were falling. In fact, just 31% shooting overall for Wado as a, as a guard. But the steal numbers were really nice, and that's what gives him a level of intrigue. And, of course, the Cavs team, not very good at all. So there's going to be opportunities there in that backcourt, depending on what they do with guys like Geordie Clarkson, whether they move on from him. There could be some shooting guard minutes available at some point. There is Garland and the uh, Padawan Colin Sexton, of course, ahead of him. But we might see something from Wado, but just obviously a really deeper league sort of a player for us to just keep in mind. But didn't do his, uh, didn't do his chances any harm at all. At number 64, Quindary Witherspoon. He actually dropped down a spot here, again, mainly because guys jumped ahead of him. But he played some, you know, he put up some really good numbers in Summer League. 24 minutes a game for the Spurs, 16 points per game, 36% shooting from three. Got to the foul line a lot. Six attempts per game, a steal a game, four and a half rebounds. Wings who can show that they can shoot and score and provide some defense, they can be valuable. Now, he's not going to do a huge amount for the Spurs. Rookies and two-way guys, of course, in particular, don't really do anything for, for the, the Spurs team. And Witherspoon, a guy who is going to find it tough to crack into a rotation this season. I'm not even sure if he's actually been fully signed by the Spurs, but he did put up some really strong numbers, uh, and that drop down is, is more to the fact that some guys who we're going to talk about a little bit later jumped ahead of him significantly. At number 20, uh, not 20, at number 63, Devon Hernandez of the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors have signed him. He was the last pick in the draft, and he put up some really strong numbers. 13 points per game with seven boards. 0.8 blocks, um, attempted two threes a game and uh, shot them at 11%. So there's obviously some work to do there. And his overall finishing wasn't great, just 41% shooting as a center. He needs to get better, but the Raptors believed in him. We know that Marcus Ole and Serge Ibaka, they're not going to be around forever. There's Chris Boucher there who could move into a role at some point. But Hernandez, yeah, he impressed me a little bit more than I, than I expected. That's why he's moved up a couple of spots here. And a uh, big man who can uh, who can score a little bit, can rebound, and add some maybe some efficiency and some shot blocking can be interesting as we move forward. 
At number 62, Naz Reed of the Minnesota Timberwolves. I like the way that Reed looked on the court. He's actually dropped a spot down here to number 62, but I thought he played pretty well on a two-way with the Wolves. Averaged 12 and 5.5. And he shot 38% on his three ball and 88% at the line. And they're two really interesting numbers to look at for Reed. The fact that if he can keep those shooting numbers up, then there is uh, there is huge potential fantasy value in a big man who can do that. He shot 33% from three in college, 73% from the line. So they're not outrageously... Uh, outrageously high numbers for what he's been able to do throughout his college career. The thing that lacks with Reed is a lack of block numbers. 0.7 blocks in college, 0.7 blocks in summer league. That's what you want your big man to do more of. And of course, there's Carl Anthony Towns, uh, there's Jordan Bell ahead of him now, there's Gorgie Jeng still there. You don't expect uh, Jeng to be in the long-term plans for the, the Wolves. But uh, he showed that at least he can be uh, an upper-level G League guy. At number 61... We're looking at Justin James of the Sacramento Kings. James was not a pick that I was totally enamored with by the Kings when they made that on draft night. He's dropped a couple of spots here down to number 61. He ended up playing uh, six games, 22 minutes, only nine points, 27% shooting from three. And that's what he was brought in for, to be a shooter. Low assists, low steals, low blocks, not great rebounding numbers. His numbers are definitely not flattering. I, I think that it's even maybe it's me being biased by the fact that they're both called Justin. Could he be a Justin Jackson type who really isn't a good M NBA player and a terrible fantasy guy? I think James could be that player. So I've dropped him down a couple of spots here. Before I get on to the next 20 guys we're going to talk about, make sure you have checked out this week's episode of Locked on NBA on Monday with Trevor Booker jumping on to uh, to talk about uh, title shots for teams, which teams he thinks are the contenders, and his overall thoughts on the league. So check out Trevor Booker, former NBA player from the Utah Jazz, the Washington Wizards, and the Brooklyn Nets, among other teams. He was on this Monday's edition of Locked on NBA. The next Monday's edition is going to have me back on. I'm going to be back hosting Locked on NBA from next Monday as well, so make sure you're checking out that. All right, let's move on to the next list of guys, the... Uh, at number 60, we've got Jalen McDaniels of the Charlotte Hornets, another one of their second round players who is probably going to have to be signed at some point. He hasn't yet. We um, we, we didn't see him play in summer league. Um, has some uh, curious uh, off-court uh, misdemeanors that um, you know, could really seem quickly labeled in the shiploak category. I don't see him really ever being a significant NBA contributor, but some of his college stats were, were interesting. Now, the next guy we talk about is one of the big risers that pushed some of these players who had some moments in summer league down a bit, and that's Taco Fall uh, of the Boston Celtics. He's jumped up 13 spots to number 59. He is signed with the Celtics at the moment. He's on an Exhibit 10, meaning that when they cut him, he can go to their G League team. I don't think that he will make the final roster. Now, a lot of Celtics players, or Celtics fans, are super keen on Taco and, and want him on that final roster. There are some that you want him in the immediate rotation. I think that's a little bit foolish, but there is obviously limitations to what he can do. He's obviously ridiculously tall, can dunk without uh, without jumping. So his field goal percentage, his shot blocking, those numbers are going to be pretty good. Seven points per game in 13 minutes, 77% shooting, 1.4 blocks per game, and four rebounds. The problem is, is the minutes. How long can he stay on the court? That's what's always going to limit him, but he is at least showed an ability to come in, and he's not Boban. He's not as good as Boban. To have at least a Boban-type impact in limited minutes, he's someone to pay attention to, and I can see him maybe not this year, but probably the year after, getting in and being a, a rotation, well, not a rotation, at least being on the main roster, but probably not for this season as they look to develop him with the main red claws. Of course, he was the cult hero of Summer League this season with fans going to just see Taco at any opportunity that they could. Uh, one of the best names in the NBA as well, and hopefully he does stick at least with that G League team to see how he can, uh, how he can perform as the season goes on. At number 58, Charlie Brown of the Atlanta Hawks. He is signed to a two-way deal. Only played the three games, but 30 minutes a night and shot um, shot poorly from, from three, but he is a guy that has shot really well during his, uh, during his college career, just 27% in summer league. Average 15 points with one steal and 1.3 assists. Really, he is a shooter. He's like a 38% shooter from college. Um, the Hawks will give opportunities to young guys. They're going to look to develop players. So Brown's an interesting guy that he did fall one spot down to 58, but I still thought that he was, uh, he at least showed a little bit during his time. 
Jordan Bone at number 57. He's dropped uh, quite a quite a few spots there. I didn't think he did much to excite me. Look, 12 points in 20 minutes is is nothing to sneeze at. The three point shooting was off. Three uh, two assists per game, three rebounds, 1.3 steals. Maybe I'm a little bit harsh on Bone dropping him this much. I'm just not sure he can ever develop into anything more than a third string point guard. He is not all that big. I actually saw him. He stayed at the hotel I was staying at. Saw him in the in the cafe downstairs. He's not even as tall as I am, and I am uh, I'm just on six three. Obviously, super athletic. I just don't know if the shooting will ever and the playmaking will ever translate for Bone. Zach Norvell, the guy I want to talk about next at number 58. He did drop a couple of spots again, mainly because guys jumped ahead of him. And he stood out mainly because the Lakers team was just so bad. 26 minutes a game for Norvell, 13 points, 38% shooting from three. Three assists per game was pretty interesting as well. No defensive numbers, poor rebounding. So I think that those assist numbers might be a little bit inflated, not something we should expect from Norval. He's going to be a guy that plays a lot on the South Bay Lakers. He's, uh, I believe, a two-way guy for the Lakers this season. I don't think he's going to get too much in terms of rotation minutes, but at least he did show out a little bit. And in a situation where he was the best player on the team, he was the best player on the team. And that's always a positive sign to see from guys like um, Zach Norval. Um, next, we look at Mia Oni of the Utah Jazz, a second round pick. He played 26 minutes a night, almost nine points per game, 38% shooting from three on five attempts, averaged three rebounds and two and a half assists in those 26 minutes with a steal and a block. He was an interesting guy coming out of college, uh, an Ivy League graduate or came from an Ivy League school, did drop a couple of spots here, but I can see the Jazz, they develop these interesting statistical type of guys like George Niang, a guy who really started to come on last season. I think only, probably not for this season, but in the future, could really start to uh, to step it up and be at least a deeper league, interesting type player. At number 54, Lugens Dort of the Oklahoma City Thunder. He did drop two spots from where he was before. He looks really huge because he is really muscular. The couple of Thunder games that I watched, he didn't really show me huge amounts. Uh, poor shooting, and that's a real problem with Dort. 23% from three, 55% from the line, nine points per game. Didn't do anything. Yeah, half an assist, 0.8 steals, under two rebounds. Um, this is probably quite generous in terms of uh, Dort's ranking, and I wouldn't be surprised if I redid this and, and reassessed it over yeah the next couple of months. He fell significantly um, because yeah he, he just wasn't all that impressive during his uh, during his time. Shamori Pons, a, a guy that I did praise the Rockets for signing. 53rd overall, dropped a, a cup for 53rd in my rankings overall. Did drop a couple of spots down. His um. His summer league performance wasn't great, 20 minutes a night, clearly outshone by Chris Clemens, and maybe uh, I could very easily be persuaded to switch these two in the rankings. I do like Pons' ability to get assists. We didn't see that too much in summer league, seven points and two assists in, in his 20 minutes, but a really nice steal rate. But again, the shooting was so bad. 30% from the field, 23% from three, 56% from the line across his 100 minutes of action. That's what's going to limit him from being an impact player or a guy that can actually get on the court in the NBA. So Shamori Pons, I think a little bit disappointing overall, someone who I thought would do better than that. Now, another Jazz guy, along with Oni, who I thought was pretty good, Justin Wright Foreman, a prolific scorer in college, 26 minutes a night and averaged 12 points in summer league. Shot poorly, as many guys did, and that's the overall theme from this class. Not good shooters. 24% from three, 33% overall, but averaged three assists, one and a half steals on 12 points. A guy that can contribute in a few categories, a nice wing-type scorer, who you're going to think is going to take a little bit of time, again, to, to get into this Jazz rotation, but someone who, with their, their three... Um, with their three second round picks, I really liked what they did with all of those picks, and uh, yeah, Wright, Wright Foreman was uh, was almost uh, as advertised. The next guy who's taken one of the biggest leaps in my rankings was Josh Reeves of the Dallas Mavericks. He's jumped 28 spots here. He's signed to a two-way. He just popped when I watched him. 12.6 points, almost five boards and two and a half assists, 1.2 steals, almost a block, 79% from the line, 32% from the three-point line. I really, look, it's not really about all of his stats. He only played 24 minutes a night. Just out on the court, he was exciting. He looked really, really good on this Mavericks team who was run by Cameron Payne, my man, who was out there putting up some pretty big numbers. But Reeves just looked good. And the Mavericks, you know, using two-way guys, using these um, uh, undrafted type of players like Ryan Brokoff, who you know, came on strong and has a guaranteed contract now for next season. Reeves is a guy who I could absolutely see fitting into a guard rotation in a couple of seasons. Maybe when J.J. Barea retires, he's back for one more year this year. You could see Reeves moving in, but he did a lot to get me interested in, in what his future can bring. So Josh Reeves, uh, a guy that jumped up 28 spots to number 51. 
The next Jazz guy that I want to talk about is Jarrell Brantley. Averaged nine points per game. He's moved up, or sorry, he's moved down a couple of spots to number 50. Uh, 22 minutes, 27% shooting from three. All his shooting numbers were pretty poor. Five rebounds. A power forward type of guy. Now, after losing Derek Favors, getting another type of power forward guy in there to develop along with the George and Yang player. Brantley has that opportunity. Um, I do have him the highest out of those three Jazz guys, Oni and Wright Foreman, mainly just because uh, of the position that he plays and I think the ability for him to, to you carve out those sort of minutes there. Um, but I could easily, all three of those guys, I think, have the potential. None of them are going to, not all, sorry, not all of them are going to develop into useful NBA rotation players, but I feel pretty confident that at least one of them will. And at this point, I've got Brantley as the highest guy there. Admiral Schofield of the Washington Wizards. Well, how bad the Wizards' uh, rotation is, Schofield's probably going to have to play this season. 49th in my overall rankings here. He played 18 minutes a night. The shooting, again, just piss poor. 39% from three, 22%, sorry, 39% overall, 22% from three. One of the knocks on him coming out of Tennessee was the shooting. 0.8 assists, no steals, 0.2 blocks, 7 points and 3 rebounds. Just a, a barren fantasy line from Schofield. And while he might have to get some minutes, he's not a guy that I think we should be really valuing too much. And it could be one of those situations, like his teammate Rui Hachimura, that they are forced into more minutes than they're actually good enough to play. And that might just increase some of their counting stats, although Schofield's got some worries there. Um, and it might over-inflate their long-term dynasty value. So it could be a guy that you, you pick, and then people look at him and go, oh, look at him, he's getting 15 minutes a night, maybe a little bit of the Dylan Brooksies, who I think Brooks is significantly overrated because he played a lot of minutes in that rookie season and had that nice flourish at the end. It's Jordan Clarkson disease. You come in, uh, Timotei Luwawu Cabro at the end of a rookie season, come in and put up big numbers on a tanking team. I think Schofield might actually fit into that, and then a sell-high opportunity really does arise after their rookie season. At number 48, Aaron Sm uh, Aaron. Alan Smilagic of the Golden State Warriors. The NBA people that I talk to about Smilagic, they really, really like him. They're very interested in what he can do. Now, rotation minutes this season, probably not going to be fantastic for him to get in there, but a big man who moves pretty well, 7.5 points per game. Now, the shooting numbers, 22% from the from three, 57% from the line, 36 overall are bad. Really good rebounder. Needs to improve the, the shot blocking numbers. Only 0.4 here in Summer League. But Smilagic, the Warriors really like him. And I think that he will be a rotation player in probably his third year in the NBA would be my guess. Uh, and he'll get some spot minutes this season. But some interesting numbers from him. Uh, no doubt... Uh, for the uh, for the Golden State Warriors um, there as he played last season for their G League team. We'll play majority of the games for the G League again. At number 47, KZ Okpala. We didn't see him in Summer League for the Miami Heat. Wasn't a huge fan of, uh, of the Heat making that pick there. I don't think his fantasy game is all that interesting. But Wings, if they can translate into 3 and D guys, there will be minutes available at some place in the league. At number 46, we've got another Golden State Warriors guy. Geordie Poole played 27 minutes a night, uh, 15 points per game. The reason that Poole was drafted at the end of the first round was for his shooting. We didn't see that at Summer League, 22% overall, but hit his free throws, which is a much better indicator than three-point percentage, 85% on his free throws. Two steals a game is also really interesting. That's not going to be able to keep up, but could he be a, a very, very barren, homeless, bums version of uh, Landry Shamit? Maybe. As a deeper league three-point streamer, the, wa the Warriors are going to need guard bodies with Clay Thompson out, so maybe we see the occasional game from, uh, from Jordan Poole. Of course, we remember Sean Livingston's gone as well. D'Angelo Russell is in, but... Yeah, Quinn Cook's gone. So Paul could find some uh, opportunities there to hit some threes. Um, he looked okay, but he didn't look... Uh, I don't think he looked fantastic. Eric Pascal, another Warriors player. Just the three games for Pascal. 24 minutes, 11 points. Shot really well, 43% from three. Not overly confident of that being able to continue. Did enough in those other areas. I'm just not really sure where he fits in the NBA. He's a little bit of a tweener. Um, doesn't have all the best attributes in the fantasy game. He's not spectacular, but he, he did okay, I thought. Isaiah Roby of the Dallas Mavericks, one of the, there wasn't many players on the Mavericks that were really worth uh, worth watching during Summer League, but Roby was one of them I thought that was mildly interesting, 28 minutes a night, um, took quite a few threes, almost three attempts per game, didn't hit them very well, five rebounds, nine points, 1.2 blocks with a steal is what gets me interested in Roby, of course he's behind a lot of guys, Dwight Powell, uh, Maxi Kleber, Kristaps Porzingis, Porzingis, 
uh, in that front court. So there's a little bit of a time to go, but I think he's an interesting development guy, much along the sort of path that Dwight Powell took. He's got some interesting fantasy upside. If he can ever develop that three-point game to add to some defensive numbers and rebounding numbers, there's a little bit there to look at with Isaiah Roby. The last guy I want to talk about really in detail here is Terrence Mann, a pretty significant rise in my ranks, up 12 spots to number 43. Mann for the uh, Clippers played a lot of point guard. His stat line is pretty bizarre. 8.7 points, but 11.3 rebounds, almost six assists, one steal, shot 60% from the field. 33% from the free throw line and just 20% from three. So the numbers are all over the place, but his hustle was amazing. He was so aggressive on the boards. He was really strong at playing that point guard role. His role this season is going to be pretty limited, of course, but this Clippers team who gave away quite a bit in terms of future assets to get Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, Shea Gutis, Alexander gone as well, they're going to need someone like Mann to develop. And I think I underrated him a little bit when I did the initial rankings. But overall, he was uh, he was weirdly impressive with that uh, you know, quite strange stat line with those really high rebounds and assist numbers, low points, high field goal percentage, but low threes and free throws. There was a lot of weird stuff about what he was able to do in his three games. He's a four-year player out of Florida State. Um, yeah, rebounded pretty well there, but those assists sort of came out of nowhere. Averaged only 1.9 assists per game throughout his time in Florida State. Um, it played a little bit of a different role in summer league, and it did seem to suit him. So he's someone to watch at least uh, moving forward as uh, this team is going to be bitten a little bit in terms of their asset uh, pool. Two more guys to talk about here. Devadis Savitas uh, of the Detroit Pistons. He dropped down three spots uh, down to number 42. Didn't do much there. Only seven minutes at night from the Pistons. Won't be playing in the NBA. Under two points. Nothing else was even over one in terms of his counting stats. Um, you know, not a lot to get excited about. And I could easily drop him de- down. Look, I don't want to make too many rash adjustments from my initial list because the initial list was made with uh, a lot of research and thought. So you know, basing it off four games in summer league is not ideal to drop these guys. But he was definitely on the uh, on the way down. And then at number 41, looking at Tremont Waters of the Boston Celtics, a two-way guy now, a guy that can generate high amounts of assists. And we saw that in summer league. Five assists and two steals with 11 points. 18% shooting from three is not great. 64% from the free throw line, also not very good, as you're all well aware. Carson Edwards outplayed him significantly, so getting those backup minutes is not going to be easy for Tremont Waters. Now, Waters had a huge tragedy before him. His dad was found uh, dead uh, about a week or so ago, so our thoughts go out with him as he tries to, to mourn that, and that might be tough for him to try and you know really focus this season. But a guy who had a high steal rate in college, Strong assist rate, carried that over Summer League. He's a name to watch. With this Celtics team, coming years, what they do with Jalen Brown, does he go? Is Marcus Smart ever going to be traded? Probably not, but there is an opportunity for Waters to come in and be that guy who can come off the bench like a Jalen Brunson, like a JJ Barea, like uh, other names that I've thrown out plenty of times. Guys can come in and give you four assists in 16 minutes a night. They can be valuable in fantasy. And I think that Tremont at some point has the ability to get there. So at 41, he comes in there, even though he did drop down by three spots. That'll do it for my 80 to 41 rankings, re-rankings of the Dynasty Rookie Ranks. Tomorrow we'll go through the top 40 uh, with so many of those guys at the top end not even playing. We were quite frustrating with Summer League. Make sure you are following me on Twitter at RedRock underscore Beeble, on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball, Patreon, Red, uh, patreon.com slash RedRock underscore Beeble, and you'll get all the information for the Red Rock Challenge Leagues as well. Subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. You know, all the great ways. Tell your friends as well. We're going to do heaps of mock drafts throughout the season, uh, throughout this preseason. Positional tiers with Matt Smith, me and Kyle discussing our projections. So much content coming for you guys. Team previews with all of the hosts across the Locked On Podcast Network as well. You don't get that sort of insight anywhere else. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.